sobriety. Okay, well, welcome. Let me press this got it button. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Um, we'll get to introductions in a moment. Uh, but first, we wanted to thank the conference organizers for making all of this possible. Um, and we also want to thank all of you here uh, for joining us today. Um, today, I'm joined by two brilliant Cal Poly Humboldt student leaders, and we're here to present multilingual publishing, making room for everyone's making room for everyone means making room for everyone's language. Uh, I hand it over to Kieran. Hello, um, my name is Kieran Dunning, she, her. Um, I'm an English student at Cal Poly Humboldt, and I also serve as the co-managing editor for Toyon Multilingual Literary Magazine, and I am the founder and president of the Creative Writing Club here on campus. Hi, everybody. My name is Alana Guevara. I use she, her pronouns. I am also an English student at Cal Poly Humboldt, and I am the other co-managing editor on Toyon uh, for the previous issue, I worked as the production team lead, and I've also been employed uh, at the press at Cal Poly Humboldt, where I design books, and I'm currently serving as a managing editor on the Humboldt Journal of Social Relations. Hi, everyone. I am Marcos Hernandez. I go by he, him pronouns, and I'm the faculty advisor uh, for Toyon Multilingual Literary Magazine at Cal Poly Humboldt. Uh, where I also teach first-year writing and literature courses. <clears throat> so I'm going to get us started. Uh, I wanted to do some agenda setting before we um, uh, before we start uh, presenting. Um, I'm going to get us started by providing some relevant context on Cal Poly Humboldt and Toyon Multilingual Journal of Literature and Art. Um, then I'll go ahead and hand it over to Kieran and Alana, who are going to show us some examples of what multilingualism looks like in the context of student-run publishing. Um, Kieran, Alana, and I will then follow up with a discussion of some of the risks we've had to take into account and some of the challenges we've faced in sustaining a multilingual platform. But we're not here to wallow in doom and gloom. So we'll end that section by pointing to the promise of multilingual publishing. While it often feels like we're at odds or that we have the odds stacked against us, we are firmly committed to multilingual publishing because of the opportunities and the possibilities that it affords. Um, finally, Alana will conclude our presentation uh, with a summary of our insights as to why publishing multilingual publishing matters. And then we'll also have time for a very quick Q&A at the end of our presentation. <clears throat> All right, so uh, as I said, I wanted to provide some relevant context on Cal Poly Humble and Toyon Multilingual Literary Magazine. And I'm gonna start with a timeline, just a quick timeline. <laughs> Uh, Toyon Literary Magazine, um, which I'll probably hereafter refer to as Toyon, uh, was established in 1954 and was originally envisioned as a small, unpretentious literary newsletter, a vision that we've strived to live up to in the many decades since. We've been around for nearly 70 years, uh, to the extent that we're now considered a legacy publication here at Cal Poly Humboldt. Uh, if we fast forward some 60 years, in 2013, Humboldt State University uh, crossed the 25% Latinx enrollment threshold and became a Hispanic serving institution. Um, at this time, we notice or there's increased momentum to move the needle on diversity, equity, and inclusion here at uh, what was then Humboldt State University and is now Cal Poly Humboldt. Um, some of the changes uh, that happened. Um, this isn't represented in the in the timeline, but in July of 2016, El Centro Academico, uh, HSU's Latinx Cultural Center, was established to provide support uh, to provide a support space for Latinx students on campus. And in line with some of these broader shifts uh, happening on campus, 
Toyon rebranded as a multilingual publication in 2016 uh, with a special focus on English, Spanish, cross-cultural dialogue and production. Um, again, in line with our new designation uh, as an HSI and some of the broader shifts that were happening on campus. Um, in 2022, uh, earlier this year, Humboldt State University officially became Cal Poly Humboldt. This change um, is directly tied to our designation as an HSI and the official press coming from the university. Uh, um, the increased momentum to bring about wider changes on campus related to equity and inclusion is reflected in Cal Poly Humboldt's core vision statements. I'm not going to read these. Um, I'm not going to read these in full, but I just wanted to point out that, as you can see, there's a large emphasis placed in these core vision statements on equity and inclusion broadly across campus, but also with particular regard to the arts. <clears throat> Um, we also felt that it would that we also felt that the data on Cal Poly Humboldt demographics was relevant to our talk here today. Uh, we aggregated the data and it shows that 53% of our students self report as BIPOC, mixed race, or other, while 45% self report as white. Yet, while the student body at Cal Poly Humboldt is diverse, the diversity is not rec necessarily reflected in the local area. Cal Poly Humboldt is the northernmost campus of the CSU system. We are a diverse campus situated in a rural, predominantly white area. Um, <clears throat> and I, uh, so th that provided a little bit of institutional context about as to where we're coming from. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, in line with some of those broader shifts, uh, Toyon took a multilingual turn uh, in 2016. So in that year, we rebranded as a multilingual journal. This is the first time that we publish as Toyon Multilingual Journal of Literature and Art. Um, that volume, volume 62, contains our first two literary translations um, and actually our first multilingual works in our then 62-year history. Uh, Toyon 67, uh, which was published in 2021, is the first issue to feature a Spanish language volume title, De Dos Lados, in the journal's then 67-year history. Toyon 67 is also the first issue to feature works published as part of a special literary translation project that was funded through the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion here on campus. And as of 2021, we've published pieces in Spanish, Mandarin, Arabic, Italian, Filipino, and Swahili. Uh, those multilingual works have appeared in both the print and online editions of Toyon. We uh, publish annually our print um, book, but we also do a uh, open access ebook and a audiobook that's hosted on uh, YouTube. <clears throat> All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, we will now discuss what multilingual publishing actually looks like on the ground in a student-run literary magazine. So the first part step of the multilingual publishing process is outreach, getting attention from our target audience. As you can see from these visuals, we produce outreach materials in multiple languages. And the theme of this year's edition was sex and intimacy. So on the left, we have a flyer that was made in Spanish. And on our right, we have an English advertisement that was translated and contextualized into Spanish. While the English advertisement was put into the Cal Poly Humboldt Lumberjack newspaper, the Spanish translation was submitted to El Leñador, which is a bilingual newspaper also published um, by Cal Poly Humboldt. A part of outreach also includes uh, translating parts of our website so that our uh, Spanish speakers uh, can have all the information they need to submit to our journal. One second. And here you see an example from a few issues back where we actually had the opportunity to publish an author's work in both English and Mandarin. 
um, because the author themselves was bilingual, they were able to provide versions to us in both languages, which is an opportunity rarely afforded to bi and multilingual students, authors, and creatives. Um, then you'll also see um, that we were able to bring in Kirk Lua to produce a Spanish translation. Uh, this is our first time publishing a piece in three languages, and we hope to create more opportunities for that to happen again in the future. Now, moving forward uh, and speaking of Kirk, he is actually a former Toyon student staff member that we've now made a habit of hiring and bringing on each year to assist us with producing translated works. Um, many of Toyon's current collaborators were actually originally involved as students who have since become professionals in their chosen fields. And next, uh, you'll see another example of literary translation from our most recent issue. Um, a poem published by a then student, Alison Silver, and again, another translation by Kirk Lua. Uh, so far, we've given plenty of examples of poetry in translation, and that's simply because it's easier to show off a short poem than a longer text um, in this context. Uh, but no matter what material requires translation, it's not an easy process. So something as short as poetry could even be more work than translating um, a short story or, or prose, because poetry can rely on breaking standard language conventions. And a translator has to be mindful of the cultural context behind those conventions and um, metaphors and, and uh, other uh, figurative language. Uh, Toyon strives to maintain multilingualism in both the print and digital versions of our issues. Uh, we would like to highlight volume 68, which, as mentioned previously, was our first issue to feature a non-English title, De Dos Lados. Uh, to maintain multilingualism, we typically ask the original authors to supply recordings of their pieces, um, and we also use the voices of our multilingual students. <clears throat> Welcome to uh, then here you'll see a flyer for a virtual event that we held last year with the goal of helping folks to write some uh, poetry and maybe submit to toy on. Um, we wanted to ensure that as many people as possible felt welcome in joining us so we recreated the same flyer in Spanish. Um, specifically because we are an HSI as Marcus previously mentioned, and that means we have a responsibility to engage with our Hispanic and Latinx students, as well as our community members. Um, we are a multilingual uh, journal, but we do primarily serve English and Spanish speakers in the area. So that is where our focus tends to lie. And speaking of, uh, last year, we also partnered with the Cal Poly Humboldt Music Department to host the Sana Sana competition, uh, which we invited Latinx poets to submit their work for a chance to uh, have their poetry turned into a musical composition and performed at a live concert. Uh, not only was it an effort to create a unique opportunity for underrepresented authors to uh, have their voice and um, thoughts heard, but it was also a unique collaboration across university departments and a way for students to establish creative working relationships. Um, I know this firsthand uh, because not only was the concert a roaring success and I was there in attendance, but one of my own poems uh, was selected and turned into a full choral composition. Um, on the next screen, you will see um, the uh, another winning piece entitled Orgullo by Azarel Garcia um, about feeling pride in one's own heritage. And this uh, piece in particular was submitted and performed in Spanish. Um, the concert was recorded and preserved on YouTube. And um, if our wonderful producer doesn't mind, I believe she's going to drop that link into the chat um, and feel free to check it out later. It was a lot of fun, a lot of really beautiful music. And I think we're going to move on into our next section. Yes, yes. Um, thanks, uh, Kieran and Alana, for sharing some of the powerful and meaningful ways that Toyon has engaged in multilingual publishing over the last six years. 
Now we'd like to address some of the risks and challenges that come with sustaining a multilingual platform. In these past six years, since we've uh, made our multilingual turn, we've learned so much about what works, what doesn't, and what kinds of support uh, we need from our community and from our institution in order to make this vision a reality. Uh, um, I'll speak a little bit to um, our issues with, um, with to, I'll speak to some of our risks and challenges, and I think Kieran is also going to help me out a little bit here. Um, I guess I'll get started by saying that to do multilingual publishing right requires a lot of things. It requires consistent funding, infrastructure, and support from our community and our institution. One of the main hurdles that we've had to face is lack of consistent funding. Um, our funding uh, is typically, I mean, the idea that we have in mind for our funding is that it helps to pay for our guest speakers who provide editorial training for our editors. Um, we also like to pay our collaborators whenever possible. Um, we've worked several times with local translators in our community to produce translations as part of special translation projects. Um, and more than giving them a publishing credit in our print book, print and digital book, uh, we also like to compensate them monetarily. Um, and also, and probably the, the, the biggest hurdle that we've had to face is making up for the difference uh, for increased printing costs uh, to make room for those translations, to make room for multilingual publishing uh, in our publication. Um, that's, in, that's over the last few years, that's increased our page count. Um, and with that increased page count comes increased print costs. Um, our multilingual projects over the last six years have been supported generously through grants. I mentioned the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion supporting uh, our translation projects. But we hope that one day we can establish consistent, ongoing institutional support uh, for mul our multilingual efforts that we presently don't have. <clears throat> um, Karen, did you... Uh, want to speak to location and context? Yes, I can. Uh, so risk two is location and context. Uh, Humboldt County is a predominantly white and English speaking uh, county. This limits our options for local outreach, with one example being that El Leñador, where we uh, put the translated Spanish ad, that's actually the only bilingual newspaper in all of Humboldt County. Uh, while we want to advertise to all local writers of all backgrounds and languages, uh, we are unfortunately not really given very many options. Um, did you want me to say the next one? Sure, yeah. Uh, risk three is that we do rely heavily on our multilingual students. These students do carry a great deal of responsibility with a few examples of that being they're reading our multilingual submissions, they're helping to translate advertisements and sections of the website, uh, and they're reading the multilingual pieces for the audiobook. This is obviously a lot of labor. It's very labor in intensive, uh, time consuming as well for them. And if there aren't any multilingual students present among our staff, uh, that can create some extra hurdles as well. <clears throat> yeah, and so to alleviate some of those concerns, when we have found ourselves in instances where we don't have an editor or a student who is available um, and knowledgeable of the source and target language for translation work, um, we've had to seek out multilingual readers, editors, and translators within our community to help support that work. Um, we accept multilingual submissions in any language, but uh, we have at times found it difficult to find readers and editors who can support um, our uh, review and potentially editing of those multilingual submissions should they uh, be accepted into the journal. Um, but it's only happened very rarely that we were unable to move forward with a piece because we were unable to find a suitable reader um, 
or editor for that piece. Um, uh, those instances have been far and few between for us, fortunately. Um, and then lastly, um, multilingual publishing takes time. Um, uh, we need to account for uh, the review of multilingual submissions during our submission review period. Um, uh, the special uh, literary translation project takes time because uh, it, it requires us to select pieces that we think would be a good fit for translation, to have a conversation as to why, um, and then to, to uh, seek out uh, collaborators and have those collaborators meet with authors, uh, meet with the editors to work on those translations. Because one of the one of our one of our um, our principles for engaging in literary translation is that we don't want it to be merely transactional, where we pay a translator, we give them the piece, and then a couple weeks later they send us the translated piece. We like to bring together our authors, our editors, and our translators to collaborate. Um, and again, that um, that just increases the time um, needed to, to do this work. Um, and so we've needed to find ways to carve space for it within the constraints of the semester system, uh, which isn't always easy. <clears throat> All right. Uh, but as yeah, as I said earlier, we don't like to, we don't, we don't want to wallow in the risks and the challenges. We'd much rather highlight. Um, and point to some of the promises of multilingual publishing. Um, so I think I'm going to hand it over to Alana. I think Alana and I are going to tag team this one. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Marcos. Um, so yeah, I mean, with the risks definitely comes the possibilities, and we firmly believe that those possibilities um, are uh, outweigh the risks, uh, to put it bluntly, um, because uh, it creates a space um, for so much diversity in, in the world of, of publishing that uh, is we, we find is lacking. Um, so as you can see on screen here, um, our first bulleted point is that um, it allows editors and collaborators uh, to achieve a uh, publishing credit um, as trans, <clears throat> excuse me, as translators um, and published writers, many of whom are in fact students, whether they be uh, students at Cal Poly Humboldt or at any other campus, uh, get to see their work written in another language. <clears throat> yeah, in addition to that, um, our student editors, um, those are the folks who uh, work on staff um, for Toyon, uh, get the opportunity to engage with and learn from other cultures through language. Um, uh, Kieran, did you have something? To, I think you had uh, multilingual readers. Yeah, um, because we are in a predominantly English speaking county, uh, a lot of the service like local services, uh, local literary options are English speaking. And so the non English speakers don't have, they don't have a lot of options. So Toyon is um, a good addition for those readers. Mm -hmm. Um, um, to yeah. add to that, it, you know, helps to affirm um, the cultures and languages of all students, of all of our readers, um, and it, it creates that sense of inclusivity into the publishing and literary worlds. <clears throat> we'll also add that, um, that that spirit of inclusivity that's embedded in our multilingual orientation um, signals to prospective students, staff, and community members that their voices are held in equitable regard, even if English is not their first and only language. Um, and we, and and this is, I mean, as you as you might have noticed from some of the um, some of the things that we shared earlier, we get a lot of publicity for some of the, for the work that we do in multilingual publishing. Um, we got a lot of press for the Sana Sana competition, um, for our various publications, and these are what people see when they're thinking about attending Cal Poly Humble, with prospective students, with their families, and what other staff and faculty members see um, when they are um, thinking about Cal Poly Humble. Um, I'll also add here that um, 
that our work in multilingual publishing creates opportunities for student-led research and encourages comp contributions to the growing field of research on multilingual publishing. And in fact, uh, Kieran, Alana, and I are currently working on a research study on multilingual publishing that we hope to turn into a research article um, by sometime next year. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. All in all, as Kieran would like to say, it's worth every risk. <laughs> um, all right. And then I think we are about done. Uh, Alana has uh, uh, some concluding remarks. Uh, and then we'll take a couple questions. Yeah. So we want to be able to get to your questions. So we're going to try and uh, breeze through this here. But we really wanted to talk about why it matters. Because we just talked about, of course, the possibilities. But we've been doing this for um the better half of a decade now and we've seen tangible results um so for instance multilingual publishing um, has the ability to disrupt the linguistic hegemony that we exist in um, and gatekeeps the academic community uh, the prevailing um culture within our country is an English-speaking culture, but there are so many other voices uh, that deserve to be heard um, so that we can have a better diversity in thought. Um, and multilingual publishing draws on both cultural and linguistic wealth of our students and communities and brings that into our classes. Um, it removes the barriers to full participation in academic and creative production uh, multilingual publishing challenges our implicit biases and expectations of a monolinguistic culture, and again, especially in academic spaces. Um, it creates opportunities for multilingual authors who might feel cast aside by the current, again, predominantly English-speaking uh, literary hegemony. And then finally, uh, multilingual publishing expands the notion of academic community by ensuring that voices that would otherwise go unheard receive space and eyeballs. Wonderful. Thank you, Alana. All right. I think we have time for maybe one or two questions. Um, so if anybody, we'll take the first two and maybe we'll use the chat feature. Um, and we'll we'll just take the first two questions that um, that enter into the chat, uh, if that works for everyone. So if you have any questions for us, um, please feel free to ask. We're happy we're happy to to try to give it our best response. <clears throat> In the meantime, Marcus, um, would you mind forwarding to the next slide, which has uh, some of our contact information as well as our toy on website if uh, anybody would like to grab that before we leave. Yes, if you're interested in learning more about Toyon um, and in sharing um, this publication opportunity to your students or to the people that to the artists in your life, uh, feel free to share our link. We are toyonliterarymagazine.org. Um, and you can reach us via email as well at the Gmail provided here. Uh, and if you have any questions for us, uh, uh, for us uh, for the presenters here, we've also included our uh, uh, HSU or sorry, our Cal Poly Humboldt emails. Uh, I was a graduate of Humboldt State, so I'll continue to say it till I die. Um, Marcus, it looks like we do have a question in the chat. Uh, Stephen Wilson says, have there been any forms of resistance to your efforts? And I, I believe as faculty advisor, you might be best suited to speak to this. Yeah, I mean, I. I think because we started making these changes as part of a broader shift at Cal Poly Humboldt, um, for the most part, we've been met with embrace um, and 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 gratitude and love um, and general excitement for the work that we're doing. Um, the so I, I can't say in and I've only been the faculty advisor for three years now this this um, multilingual orientation started a few years before my time and there might have been some initial resistance I just wasn't party to those conversations 
um, uh, the resistance that we face are, are really the challenges that we that we faced in finding adequate funding and infrastructure and, and creating infrastructure for our publication. That's where we've received the most resistance, but it hasn't been from any particular uh, person or constituency here at Cal Poly Humboldt. <clears throat> Thanks, Stephen. Well, I think we're at time. Um, feel free if you have any other questions, um, feel free again to reach out to us via the uh, Toyon email or any of our respective uh, personal uh, Cal Poly Humboldt emails. Uh, we're happy to take any questions that way, uh, should any arise. Again, we want to thank the conference organizers for putting on this event, for hosting us, and all of you who attended for, for letting us speak uh, to you, uh, for taking some of your time to hear us talk about um, this exciting work that we've been doing uh, over the last uh, few years. <clears throat> thank you all for joining us today. 